All right, we want to study a little bit this morning in the book of James, in the second chapter. We uh, want to talk to you just a little bit about and read to you some uh, respect. Uh, here we see this word in James 2. We want to uh, talk to you just a little bit about that. So in the chapter 2 of the book of James, my brethren have not faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. James is saying, he's talking about his brethren in the church. I believe this is the way he wanted it. And he says they don't have the faith. They don't have the faith that uh, the Christ does. And that's, uh, that's a common thing because we don't all, none of us, I don't think, have the faith that Christ does. But anyway, he says here, uh, my brethren have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of all. Now this word respect, and I, there are some things in the, in the Bible that we studied and looked up and, and these things, but uh, the respect that I found, it was that, that I looked it up, was in the uh, dictionary, and it says to notice with special attention to regard, to heed. Now, the special attention, and it's also considered, the special attention that, I, that uh, I, I was thinking about, we need to have respect to one another. We need to have respect to the Lord Jesus Christ of heaven because he is the one that respects us. Amen. And we'll see this as we try to study some and we try to read some of these things, but Respect is something that we all uh, fall short in, in some senses, and uh, we'll, we'll read some things here that happen in this, in this writing, and uh, we can get a, a little bit from that. But in verse 2, it says here, For if there come unto you your assembly, now I'm, I'm assuming maybe it's a church, or it may be a wedding, or it may be a feast, I don't know, but he didn't say, but assembly, and I, we want to... Uh, kind of use it as a church. But anyway, for if there come unto you your assembly a man with a gold ring in godly, a goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to that, wear, that to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say to him, Set thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there. Or sit there under my footstool. So this is a this is an example of respect. And uh, so many times this this in our lifetime we we look at a person and we judge them uh, within ourselves. We may not say nothing, but we judge. We make a we make a thought in our hearts about these people. And a lot of times the the flesh is very. Uh, untruthful in right. their judgment because they uh, they they look at the clothing they look at the the, uh, uh, the shape of the person or they look at the way he's uh, got his hair fixed or they look at what he's wearing on his hands or on his feet or whatever and a lot of times we we say to ourselves well uh, you know I would say something to him I would talk to him about coming to church, but I don't know uh, if the people there at the church would, uh, they think, well, you know, or I would I would say something to him, but somebody else out here might see me saying something to me and say, hey, uh, you know, you're going off of the deep end a little bit talking to that person. That's that's the, that's the thing that that works with us in the flesh. A lot of times we have, we have these opportunities to speak to people and to encourage them. And listen, people, you can encourage, you can encourage anybody uh, with, with, uh, with a few words. And if he's rich, he's rich. If he's poor, he's poor. If the Lord kind of pushes you that away and says, hey, you need to say something to him, you need to do it. Regardless if he's got, Man. If he's got urine all over his clothes or if he's dressed in a thousand dollar suit, it don't make any difference Amen. because within that 
old suit, and within that flesh, there is an everlasting living soul. Right. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ had respect for us, and he went to the cross, and he made it possible that we would have a way to escape the hell that we were doomed to go into. And so this is something that we need to, we need to consider within ourselves about uh, uh, how we put ourselves on a pedestal and say, well, you know, I'm, <clears throat> you know <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to fool with that color. But, you know, you need to just, you need to just turn, turn these things loose and, and go about it and do these things because it will help you Amen. in the long run. And it will, you know, it will, it will, it will, it will give the glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you say something in the name of Jesus to us, to a man, even whatever condition he is in, listen, you are exalting the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants that. He wants to be exalted. He wants to, uh, to see his children exalt him and obey him because he is like our father in a greater respect. We need to respect him more so than we did our earthly father. And so he says here, he's talking about this, but he says here in verse 4, Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? And the evil thoughts is that you're thinking, hey, I don't need to have nothing to do with that person. Well, listen, you're the only one that might ever have a chance to do Amen. with that person. You know, and here he's saying that these are judging, you're, you're, you're judging that person, and you have no reason whatsoever in your body, in your soul, or anywhere to judge anybody because the Lord says to not to judge because he's the one that does the judging and so that puts us in a position to where that we can come up to that person and and talk to that person or say something to that person encourage that person tell him about the lord jesus christ and listen if it never if it never if you never see anything listen it's like brother Larry said this morning god's word will not return void amen and listen one day one day that person will stand before God and give an account for that that you told him. And you will stand there <laughs> before God one day and he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so, listen, you got you, you can't lose. You can't, it's a no it's a no lose situation. You can't lose by talking to someone and telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of what kind of condition they're in. Now, here again. He says here, hearken my beloved brethren, in verse 5, brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them to love him. Now he said here, James saying, he has, has not God chosen the poor of this world? Now, how has he chosen them? Well, first of all, listen, he made them poor. Now, you think that sounds stupid, but it, 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 he made them poor in that, listen, they have not got a bank full of money. They have not got a $40,000 home, and they haven't got all of these things to worry about. And listen, when you have worldly things, you worry about them. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Uh, you, you, you will still worry about them. And so this, this poor guy, this, these poor people... They, he has made them, and he says here, um, I have not God chosen them. He's chosen them, and of course, if he chose them, when did he choose them? He chose them in the beginning. Amen. So he had, he had to say so over their life before they were even created. They were going to be poor. Now, that may sound silly, but listen, that's, I believe that's the way that God right. does Amen. it. Because listen, he, he chose you, if you're saved this morning, he chose you before, before eternity even started. He chose you, and he made a plan for you, and he said, this will be my servant, and he's going to be, 
he, he, he might not have said he might go be poor, but he's going to have something that will keep him close to me. He's going to have something that will cause him to look to me. And so uh, the, 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 the thing here is that God here, he says here that he promised to them that loved him. He made that promise to those that love him. And it's easier for a poor person if he, if he, well, it's not easier, but the thing of it is, it's, it's, it's more, it's more doubtful for a rich man than it is a poor man to serve the Lord like he wants to, because he's got the, the rich have got all these worldly things that, that are, that are his, and he wants to keep them, and he likes them, and uh, he don't share the love of God like the poor man, because the poor man he just ain't got it. Right but here. Here he says in verse four, are you are ye not are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judgment in verse five? Uh, hearken my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? So if they are rich in faith, what are what are they doing? They're they've got the faith and they're trusting in God to take care of them. Now this rich man that's got a bank full of money, uh the, the, the biggest percentage of them, and I'm not saying all, but the biggest percentage of them is, hey, I've got the money. If I need an operation, if I need to go to this nursing home, if I need to have medicine, if I need to have anything, I've got the money to take care of it. And that leaves God out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. But the poor man, the poor man, hey, he's like Job. He's poor as Job's turkey. And that's that's an old expression, but that's 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 poor. Now, when 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 you say that poor is Job's turkey, you're saying a whole lot. But that's the that's the poor that he's talking about. And they they've not got anything. They've not got anything that they can depend on. Uh, and and you know, if somebody comes by and gives them something to eat, they say thank you, Lord. Right. And if they come, if somebody comes by and gives them a uh, some medicine or helps them in some way, thank you, Lord. Because, listen, uh, that's the only one that they got to look forward to. And, and so, here again, notice in verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat. Now, oppress means that they will bring you up in a court of law and try to get what you got. That's how that the rich men got what they got. So he says, "Do not they do not do not do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat?" Now, in in, in First Corinthians, I want to read something to you if you if you will bear with me just a minute while I find it in First Corinthians eleven. First Corinthians eleven and verse twenty. When you when you come together, and this is uh, this is a lot of people think this maybe is the Lord's Supper, and, and I, I'm assuming that it, that's what it is. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before others his own supper, and one is hungry. And another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? So here, what I wanted you to see was that to, to them that have not. They have respect because it says here some of them are hungry. And they brought all of this stuff to eat. And of course, I, I don't know what kind of a... what what. <coughs> Uh, a Lord's Supper is what they were talking about, uh, unless they were just a, it was something besides what we do. But anyway, they bring in stuff to eat, and they bring they they done already got drunk or or drinking, and they have all this stuff, but they don't they don't do share, and that's respect, people. And he, this is probably a church that's doing these things because he says uh, them that. Uh, what shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Amen. For I have received of the Lord 
that which also I delivered unto you. And so uh, Paul here is saying, hey, I'm not holding nothing back, and he has shared this with me, and I'm sharing it with you. And he set an example to those here when he says when uh, in verse 22, uh, uh, what you have, uh, uh, and what shall I, well, let me read it, let me get it out of my mouth. What have I, what, have you not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise you the church of God, and shame them that have not? And so what he's, he, these people would bring stuff in and eat it before these, and these people were hungry, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't have nothing to eat. And so he's, they're shaming them. And then he says here in verse uh, uh, 24, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Now here's Jesus. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. He yeah. is sharing. He is not showing no respect to person. And listen, Judas Iscariot was in that 12 there. That was before Judas Iscariot went out to betray Christ. And so he is setting an example like that we should have. And here he says... Uh, take and eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me and so also he went on down and he did the same thing with the cup and he shared he shared these things and back in our lesson and James here as we are looking here now back in uh, verse uh, 6 he says but ye have despised the poor do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat do not they blaspheme that worth that worthy name, which by the which ye are called? And these old uh, rich men, he said, do not they blaspheme? Do not they curse you? Do not they uh, uh, call you old whatever? And he says here, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Yes. So. If if we can follow the royal law, if we can if we can understand this, what he says, "Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself," then listen, we will show respect to a stranger, whether he's a brother or not. We will show respect to anyone that the Lord points us to, and regardless of where he's at in a crowd of or forever, if uh, if we are, or if we hold back because we're afraid that somebody's going to look at us and kind of turn their nose up, then listen, you're uh, you're not like you should be. You're not you're not you're not loving your brother uh, like you should. Amen. You're not loving you're not loving a stranger for as that goes. And listen, that a stranger, that stranger might come to you back after you talk to him ten years from now and say, praise the Lord. I was saved because you come and listen. That's what it's all about this morning. So here, these are some of the things that that I want you to see. Uh, notice in Colossians three twenty five, Colossians verse three and verse twenty five or twenty four. Look at twenty four. Look at twenty. Let's go on back up to twenty three. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Amen. Now here, here is a thing. Like that person that we're talking about that the Lord says, you need to talk to that man. You need to say something to him. You've got to get that out of your mind that he, he's got a thousand dollar suit on or he's an overhauled with the, with the, with the legs tore around him. Listen. It's the Lord, it's because of the Lord that you're doing this. And you need to get it in your mind, hey, it's not that man as much as it is God that did what he did for me and I'm just being a witness to him because he did these things for me. And here he says here in verse 24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Notice, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Amen. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done 
and there is no respect of person. Amen. And so when we stand before the Lord and and hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, he may, like in the book of Revelation, but there is a there is something that I find fault with. You remember the time that you did this, or you remember the time that. But the white throne judgment, when they stand there and they they can and they're confessing or when the, what they're saying, he'll say, "Depart from me, you workers of iniquity." I never knew you. Amen. And listen, you're doomed. <coughs> there's no, there's no, and they will, according to the Book of Revelations, I believe it is. They say that they did not. We do this, Lord, in your name. Well, we can do things in the name of the Lord, but a lot of times it's not from the heart. It's to be seen of man or a pat on the back or something of this nature. And listen, the Lord knows all and he understands all. And so th these are some of the things here that he says here that he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And... There is no respected person. And so this morning, uh, if if we have respect, if we if we if we pick out the ones that we want to witness to, if we pick out the ones that we want to uh, uh, buddy up to, if you would, because uh, so and so don't uh, do this and do that. Listen, you've got respect. You're res you you you're 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 res you're, you're you're in respect to that other person, and so we don't need to do that. And uh, it would it would would help us all and draw us a little closer, I believe, to the Lord if when we see something like this and we we look down our nose at him just a little bit, you know, and we do. Uh, I mean, hey, we're flesh. Yeah. We do. Uh, we need to condemn the flesh. We need to say, well, Lord. I'm going to do it if you want me to because I love you and because you love me and because you died for me and you had no respect, you have no respect to person, I know that, and, 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 and do it in that, in that order. Things would be, I think things would be a lot smoother uh, for a person because, uh, you know, what tears me up a lot of times is that I go by these places up here at Walmart and other places like that and see these signs. These people say, I'm a veteran, uh, I need, uh, my family's hungry, and I need this, and I need that. And you look at them, first thing you know, you look at them and say, well, hey, he looks like he's eating full meals. But listen, we shouldn't be that way. Right. We shouldn't be that way. But I know this morning, but it don't make no difference, but I know this morning probably a lot of them uh, are just doing it to get free free. But that shouldn't enter into the picture. That should not be, that's not my problem. My problem is this, not to have respect to that person. And if God is leading, I should stop and if nothing else, say, hey, I'd like to invite you to church. I'd like to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I'd like to give you a, a, enough money to, to buy you a sandwich or take you down here and buy you a sandwich or something, another like that. But listen, I, I don't need to drive by that man and say, well, he was fat enough to me. He's, he's on full meal. He just wants something to buy. That's not my problem. That's his problem. If he's doing it in the wrong way, that's his problem. But that's respect. Uh, and, uh, you know, we we just have a problem. And I, I, I mean, I say we, I have a problem with it sometimes. And so uh, I hope, I, I feel like if the Lord will want me to read these uh, these scriptures to you. Yeah. And uh, I hope that we, we'll, we'll just think about it. Man. And, uh, pray about it. And, uh, if we're, if we're doing it, we need to confess it. We need to confess it. If we have sin in our life, we need to confess it. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that he says my to do. So, anyway, that's the lesson for today. And uh, I, I hope that it'll, uh, it'll help you through the day and it'll give you something to think about. And the next time you see somebody that you think maybe needs you to talk to, well, get the leadership of the Lord. If he said do it, you do it. If he's, if he's, well, whatever. That way, if, and, and, and he can say, well, get away. I don't want to hear it. It's all for you. It's all for you. Thank you all so much for your attention.